Okay, here we are in a Florida panhandle in a beautiful crystal clear creek. Look, we got Camisipris thioides Atlantic white cedar. All right, one of two species in the genus Camisipris in North America. The other one's Lasoniana. And uh, we're going to go check out uh, a pitcher plant population. Look, you got, is that, a, is that an old cedar log or what? Fuck. <sighs> oh, it's cold. It's chilly. <laughs> Look at that. Cupressaceae is the family in it. You got that. Uh, you got that uh, fibrous bark, Caladium is the genus here, in the Cyperaceae, these cattail looking things. Look at this beautiful, holy shit, this is nice. Look at this, Nissa biflora, one of the tupelos. Nissaceae is the family, Cornelius is the order. Look at those, look at it. Look at the form on it. A buttress. Just forming a little island, okay? It gets a little bit steeper there. Look, Louis's doing a good job of... Uh, Swimming over there, swimming up upstream. A oh. oh, it's cold. Woo! Look at it, and there we go. Saracenia leucophila. All right, look at those. Look at that nice set of pitcher plants over there. Beautiful. Look at this Nymphaea odorata, Protogynus, like so many basal angiosperms, so many, so many early branching lineages. You could call it a living fossil if you want. That's not really uh, adequate. Okay, it's a little bit more complex than that, but. Uh, you know, it is near the base of the angiosperm family tree. Protogynus at first, they're female first, trapping the beetles in there, and then they open up, and you have all those stamens, those laminar stamens right there, forming that little flower. All right, and then once the, once the fruit, once the ovaries pollinated, the whole thing sinks and the fruit matures underwater. And there we go, there's Orontium aquaticum. See that little, that little purple thing looking up? Looks like a dog penis, and those, those glaucous leaves. Aeroid family Eraceae. All right, that's the spadix. It's a type of inflorescence specific to uh, the family Eraceae, the aeroid family. This is nice. I always love looking at the aquatic grasses, <clears throat> aquatic graminoids, Eleocris elongata. Look at how it's moving in the, in the water like that. All right, almost like fire, like watching a flame. Could sit there looking at it for hours. You know, you go to San Marcos River in Texas, they got a uh, an endangered and native grass that does the same thing. Very charismatic to just watch for a few minutes, you know, in a swift moving current than what the shit. Look at Nissa. So mesmerizing. Put that as a put that as a moving screensaver on your on your PC. You know, so when you're at work and you feel like killing yourself, you got a little moment to zen. There's so few places like this left in the world. There's that Saracenia leucophile. You can see those tall pitcher plants about, about three feet tall. Those little uh, white dots on the end are, of course, just the window cells. So they're, you know, they're, their evolutionary intent is to lead the insects that get trapped in there away from the true opening of the flower. Have them crawling back towards the flower and then, of course, uh, avoiding the true exit. And you also got those little downward pointing hairs that help keep them trapped in there. Trapped in those tubes. Look, you got the Camisipris right there, too. Camisipris thioides. That goes on up into Maine. And even uh, southeastern Canada, I believe. What the shit is this? It's a bizarre looking little caterpillar on this Morella serifera. Miracase, the wax myrtle family. In the order of oaks, Phagales. And again, with the nitrogen fixing bacteria, uh, the actinomycete bacteria in a roots order. Look, you can see this Eleocaris. This sedge is holding this little stream bank together. It's pretty deep over there. It's like 10 feet, maybe eight feet. I don't know. I was I've been up, up to my chest when I came through there. And that, that all over there, another graminoid is uh, Aerocolon, is the genus Aerocolaceae, order of grasses, Poales. There you go. See, there, there's a nice intact inflorescence on that Orontium aquaticum, that aeroid. You got flies crawling on it right now. So staminate flowers, it's hard to tell, but the staminate flowers are like the top 80% I'd add spadix and the female flowers are, are the uh, bottom 20. And then the fruit, when it matures, here's a good one. The fruit, when it matures, is right there. See that? Not quite mature yet, maybe a little bit. So you just get these little fruits that come off that spadix. See that? But you can clearly see female down below, male up top. And look at that, a really robust population of Saracenia leucophila. And there's the flower right there. See that? That bright red. Look at it. All right, really weird flower morphology. Of course, you got those sepals, and then you've got those petals, and then the whole disc in the center is just a style. 
See that? That's just the style. That's the female part of the flower. The stigma where the pollen goes is at the end of those green style lobes. And the anthers are in there. See that? So bugs got to crawl in there, past those style lobes at the top of this, this uh, that green part right there. Go in there, dance around, get pollen all over it and what they should, and then come out via this little trap door that this petal creates. This little hinged door over uh, over that notch and that, that arch in the style lobes. And of course, what they're doing is just trying to get nitrogen. See, that? look at that. Look at the architecture of that. That thing's perfect. Look at the frills, the curves, the red veins, and of course that, that lip, which uh, secretes nectar and gets them to fall in there. Into that, uh, let's see who we got in there right now. We got anybody in there? No, nobody in there right now, empty. It's gotta warm up, still pretty early in the season, but you can see those hairs pointing down that act like little barbs, keeping the insects from climbing out. You know, the water's actually not too cold. You adjust to it. Look at that plant community. Nephea odorata, Orantium aquaticum, Saracenia leucophila, Camacypris thioides in the background, Morella and Cliftonia from Cyrillaceae on the banks. Nice turkey vulture cruising up ahead. You just hear the wind cruising through those pine needles. It's so pleasant. Look at that. What's he doing over there? You see these little water skippers? They've been everywhere. There's a bunch over there, too. They're cute little bastards. Yeah, check out how big and conspicuous those flowers are. Size of a baseball. God, I just had a little, a little crayfish playing footsie with me. Kind of startled me. Anyway, this is a rare one, Morella inodora. All right, another wax myrtle, formerly in the genus Myrica. That wax myrtle family, Myricaceae, you know, the one I'm always talking about does the uh, nitrogen fixation bacteria thing, you know, with the uh, actinomycete bacteria. Not the rhizobium, the ones that peas use. But anyway, you could see this uh, pretty weird. There's, I didn't know there was so much diversity in this family, let alone this genus down here in the southeast. But you could see it's uh, just growing right above this uh, somewhat swift moving creek with uh, with its feet in the water. Not in flower or fruit, wish I could show it to you, but, but look at those, look at that new new growth coming out right there. Oh, that's nice. The, the leaf shape too, look at how it tapers at the base. Like a little spatula. Look at how the Camacyparis thioides roots have created this lovely little stream bank holding it together. But check this out, Drosera intermedia, another carnivore just growing right on the banks. There's a little seedling, Camus Cypress right there. Look how long those leaves are. All right, secreting the, uh, the, the quote unquote honeydew just with those glandular trichomes to get insects stuck to them to compensate for the uh, low availability of nitrogen in these acidic soils, these sandy acidic soils. So that's where we were down there in that creek and right here you got a sandy upland, the sandy drier upland with the Serenoa repens and the Pinus palustris. Look at how large some of these cones are. See that? Look at that massive camasipris. These are big. The, that's those quote unquote cedars, which are just members of the redwood family, got actually pretty big. So these are, this comprises two of the main habitat types here. The inundated, wet, acidic, not really boggy areas because it's moving. It's, you know, a moving current. And then uh, the sandy, more arid adapted, uh, where you're going to find more of the hairy plants, plants with hairs on them because they're adapted to that sandy soil and the more, drier conditions, okay? So the sandy uplands and the wet acidic bottomlands, two of the main habitat types here in the Florida Panhandle. And here's a great indicator of a drier, more upland site, Conradina canescens, okay? It's a native member of the rosemary family, Lamiaceae. Look at those bilaterally symmetrical flowers. See those four stamens in the back right there, in the back of that flower in that little hood? Look at all the hairs all over this thing too. See, adapted to the full exposure to the sun, the drier conditions, and it smells extremely fragrant too. I wish more people in uh, Florida were planting this. It needs full sun. It likes sand, but uh, I think it'll grow in places, you know, that aren't, aren't as sandy as long as it's got the full sun. And definitely don't need to water it. And look at those flowers. God, it just smells so fragrant. Ah, oh, it is speckled. Three petals fuse into a lower lip, two petals fuse into that hood. So seven species of Saracenia in a Florida panhandle and numerous hybrids because they all bang each other. 
This is probably my favorite though. I mean, they're all pretty, they're all pretty spectacular, but Leucophila is really something else. You know, the round thing. Look at all the Nymphaea too. And anyway, that's all I got for you today. Have a good rest of your uh, afternoon, morning, whatever. Shit, go fuck yourself. Bye.